Hey guys, Bicebump here, bringing you this simulation craft and robot guide. This is meant for all of you guys out there who maybe you just started the game, heard about this simulation concept, and want to understand you know, what exactly are they, what do we use it for, how does robots work, why do we actually do this. All right, so we'll cover the basics as well as the actual practical use cases and what you can do to optimize your DPS using simulations. So first of all, what are actually simulations? What do they do? So it is an open source program that essentially takes your character and place it as in, you know, presses the buttons or whatever in a simulated game that replicates what you're doing over some period of time. And then it does it thousands and thousands of times over. It's essentially, if you would take your character going to a dummy and hitting that in a five minute period and doing that 10,000 times in a row and doing it perfectly every single time. That's what simulations do. Now, what this means is that we can make minor adjustments to, for instance, our gear or, you know, our talents. And then we can actually do a simulation to figure out if that's an improvement or not. Because in reality, if you are changing something up and it improves your DPS by, say, let's say 1%, it's going to be really difficult to actually tell that by do going on dummy and hitting it because the amount of damage you do varies quite a bit from pool to pool without you actually doing anything different. It's just some randomness going on. And that makes it really difficult to actually tell this apart. So that's why we use simulations because it means that we can make this tiny change and then we essentially go and hit the target dummy for 10,000 times in simulation and we see, okay, this was 1% different. Same thing with gear, that kind of thing. It works the same way. All right, so how do we actually do it? I said, how do we use simulations? Well, first of all, you want to go to whatever program you use to get add-ons and download the simulation craft add-on. What this allows you to do is go into the game and then type slash simc, so S-I-M-C, into your uh, chat. And that brings up this kind of window where lots of like code thingies. You want to copy that over because that's essentially a snapshot of your current character. So it includes like what race you are, what the spec you are, what talent you have, what kind of gear you have and the gear in your bag. That is what we're going to use to then plug into Raidbots. So Raidbots.com is a website that interfaces with the simulation craft program. Back in the day, you actually had to download and run the program yourself, but we now have a website where you essentially, they take your input and do the simulation for you. So it's very easy to do. When you go on the website, it looks like this. You have five different sections there. There's Top Gear, Drop the Miser, Quick Sim, Gear Compare, and Advanced. And we'll take a look at every single one of them and see exactly what it does. First of all, let's have a look at Quick Sim. So, in here, we have load from SimC add-on box. This is what we're going to be using most of the time. So you take the text you copied from when you did your slash SimC command and just paste that in there. So what that does is loads your character into the kind of simulation interface and allows you to uh, go for it. When you scroll down, you see loads of options here. Um, this is how it can change the kind of environment. If you want to do dungeon simulations or something like a raid simulation, that kind of thing. The general advice is to use a patchwork, one boss, five minutes nightly for those top four boxes and then don't change anything else. This is kind of like the standard we use to sim. So if you ask someone for help or if you're looking at like an improvement, this is what everyone is used to and uses as a reference. You run that, it sends off your details to the simulation program and then it provides you back with a number. So this is your simulated DPS with your specific gear and talents, whatever. This is roughly what you should be doing in terms of DPS if you were to hit a stationary boss for five minutes using Bloodless and all boss active. This is not what you would expect to see when it comes to uh, hitting a dummy because then you won't have stuff like Bloodlust, right? And you won't have Wind Fury or all those kind of different buffs you actually do have in a raid environment. So if you want to do that, you can 
change your fight style. There are patchwork. There's a target dummy. We don't then have raid buffs and things. If you want to actually compare your DPS. As a general rule though. You don't use simulations to actually compare your in-game DPS to what the simulation says. Sure, you can get kind of, kind of like a estimate. So if the simulation for a target dummy says you should be doing 200k and you're doing 100k, obviously you're doing something wrong. But that's not the purpose of simulations. Quick sim is just to get a good idea. Okay, so what is my simulated DPS? You can also look at things as in what should my breakdown look like on average. You can look at what the actual simulation does when it plays. So you can look at the sequence of buttons it's pressing. That can give you some insight into how you should be playing potentially. Right, so that's quick sim. Not used that much, just as kind of like a, a reference point when you want to get, okay, what is my simulated number? Now let's look into the actual usefulness here, as in what we can do, use it to figure out stuff like gear upgrades and things. So top gear is going to be really useful for you this is what i use personally to figure out what gems to equip and what pieces of gear i should actually use from my bags and what i've available to me furthermore this works when you open up your weekly vault so when you actually go and open a vault if you have that window open and type slash simc that will then pull out all the gear you have available to your vault and allows you to submit in this top gear so how this work is that when you plug in your add-on input here, it shows you all the different items you have in your bags and allows you to select the ones you want to compare against each other. So for instance, you can have a look at, okay, I have uh, four different rings. I want to figure out, okay, which two rings will be best here for me. Same thing with trinkets. You can just select all of those. Now, importantly, uh, this is like a combination problem. So as you start selecting more and more things, the number of um, combinations increases significantly. So you need to be careful. So for instance, if you have a set of boots that are, you know, significantly high eye level, don't select the ones that are much, much lower because realistically, you don't want, they won't be part of your like best setup. So just be mindful. Try and select the items that you think will be relevant for you and go with those. Furthermore, we can have... Uh, gems and enchants so at the section towards the bottom you have this uh, button replace existing gems enchants you click that in and then you select the relevant ones you want to compare against each other so for instance i'm playing in holy death knight i would always have haste and mastery selected because those are the ones that usually uh, i play around, around with when it comes to gems i would then select my different types of haste and mastery gems in combinations again this scales really quickly so if you just select try and make a an educated guess in what you should be having so you don't just select everything because that's going to just end up being far too many combinations in the end all right at the bottom we can also select talents but that is more of a that is not something you would generally do unless you're trying to figure out if you want to change the talents slightly in like in raid environments like i want to make this talent choice is that going to be a big downgrade big upgrade kind of thing once you're done done that you uh, click find top gear and then it's going to provide you with this long list of all the different combinations so you see like your current one and then you see all the different combinations you can have and how much of a difference they are in terms of dps and then it's all about you know taking that top one and making an educated choice that okay i want to change my gems i want to equip this item that kind of thing when it comes to the great vault you will then see okay this piece was the best to take from Vault. Is that what I wanted to go for this week? Could it be better to take another one to get my potentially get tear set down the line? That's a kind of uh, that's something you have to think about yourself. As a general rule, top gear is what you'll be using most of the time. It is for figuring out gems and chance and what to actually equip from your bags. Very useful tool. Now let's have a look at the other ones. So we also have drop demiser. So this is a really cool tool used to figuring out what your upgrade sh should be. Essentially, when you go in there, as again, you, you plug in your slash simc input here in the box, and then it gives you this grid of variety of sources of gear that you can kind of figure out what to get. So for instance, we have Amir Drasil. Uh, if you click that, it shows you what the uh, difficulty and upgrade level of the items you want to sim should be. So you calculate if I'm a mythic raider, I would probably select mythic 
4 out of 4. So it will take all the items in the raid, upgrade them fully, 4 out of 4, and then sim each one of them as a potential upgrade for me. If you scroll down, it kind of shows you all the gems it will look at. This will both be the items itself, as well as catalyzed versions of them. You um, use the same settings button, you to click run drop optimizer, and then it gives you this nice kind of view where you see, okay, this is every single boss that I can potentially kill. These are the upgrades for that specific boss. It gives you like the estimated upgrade value, so on. So it's, it's a very simple way of figuring out, I'm gonna go into raid, which item should I be looking for? What should I be doing here? Obviously, you shouldn't, you know, blindly look at this every single time. So for instance, me personally, I have the mirror trinket and that procs um, based on the highest secondary stats. So as an Holy Death Knight, for instance, I want that to be mastery. That means if I run a drop demizer, if any of the items would move my mastery lower than my haste, it would just show as the downgrade. Because this doesn't account for you kind of moving around your stats, moving around your gems, maybe equipping another ring when you get an upgrade. So it's very simple. All right, take this potential upgrade, replace your current piece with that and see if there's an upgrade or not. Just to keep in mind, because um, some items might actually be upgrades if you move some other things around. But that just gets a bit tricky in the end. And it's primarily a mirror thing. So if you're playing a whole deck and have a mirror, I feel it's a very difficult kind of problem to give accurate upgrade values. You just have to use your brain to figure out, you know, could this be a potential upgrade? Could I, do I have anything available where I could change my stats around and make it work? You know, that kind of thing. In addition to um, going for, uh, what's it called? Raid gear, you can also run a Myth Plus gear. So that can also be all the way up to uh, fully upgraded uh, vault pieces, plus 19. If you want to, you know, farm with a plus item, running the Mythic 20 470 eye level is a great thing to do because it then gives you a priority of what dungeons to target, give you the highest probability of getting a good upgrade. Finally, we have professions, another very useful thing. Go in there, you can click what eye level you're looking for and it will kind of compare all the different items you can craft. Unfortunately, this doesn't uh, account for embellishments. So you can't, for instance, have look at, okay, what would the upgrade be if I put on my boots with a blue silken? It would only do the boots without the embellishments. Something to keep in mind because it means that certain craft items will show lower than it might actually be in reality once you actually added the uh, proper embellishment on them. That's drop demizer. Finally, gear compare. So gear compare is kind of like drop demizer, but much more targeted. In that situation, you can look at a specific set of pieces or just look at a single upgrade thing. You just type in the name in the select item box. You set things like eye level, you set uh, whatever not this, it should have gems, whether or not there should be a um, embellishment, for instance. And then you can then sim that combination specifically. I use this for one, when I look at crafted items. So as I said before, the uh, crafted drop demizer doesn't account for embellishments. So if I want to have a look at, okay, what's the upgrade if I craft a cloak with a uh, blue silken lining, for instance, I would use gear compare to do that. Furthermore, the, the second thing I use gear compare for is for aspects or crest upgrades, for instance. You have a set of uh, gear pieces. You want to figure out, okay, so what should I upgrade here for the most kind of DPS? Well, what I do is I go into gear compare. I select every single piece that I could potentially upgrade. I'll move it to the next upgrade level. And then I sim all of those. And that gives me a nice little list of, okay, I want to spend uh, 15 crests, which upgrade would give me the most DPS, right? By plugging every individual ones in, voila, I will just get that straight off the bat and I can then make an educated choice for what to, to go for. There's also, you know, if you want to, for instance, spend your crest on a crafted piece, this also does that kind of thing. So just put in the crafted piece at the proper upgraded level and it will show you the DPS and you can figure out, okay, I will spend 60 crests on this. Is that more worth than spending 15 crests on four other upgrades? That kind of thing. 
All right, finally, the advanced section. Uh, you generally don't need to care about this. This is when you want to uh, look at things like uh, custom simulating. Um, it's essentially using custom options if you want to look at changing the APL, if you want to look at the APL is actually the, the, the priority list that the simulation uses to replicate your DPS, right? So if you wanted to play slightly differently, you would go in and change that manually and you can use the advanced bit to, to actually figure out if that's an upgrade or not. You can also do things like having a look at the raw value of tier sets without considering the eye level upgrades. Lots of things, not something you actually need to care about much when you're actually using Raybots because that was only ever used if you want to go into advanced bits which is why it's always called advance. Right, when it comes to the simulation options, um, I said before, patchwork, one boss, five minutes is the default. Dungeon slice also generally works quite well. Um, it depends a little bit on the spec, how well the uh, simulation craft character actually plays that situation. So we'd have to ask your kind of knowledgeable people for your specific spec if dungeon slice is a good idea. But if you want to, um, you know, figure out what's best for you in a myth class environment, Dungeon Slice is what you would use. Other than that, the options are not very, you shouldn't be changing them that much. Because an important thing with simulations is that it's a good reference between different players. So everyone needs to use the same kind of settings to uh, com create comparable results. So if you have another character that you're trying to figure out, okay, should we give this item to person A or person B, well, they need to use the same settings so that you, you know, do not compare apples to oranges, that kind of thing. All right, so that's my Simulation Craft Raid Bots Guide. I hope you found that useful. If you haven't uh, been using simulations before, or if you use them a little bit and just want some more context, a bit more tips and tricks, that kind of thing. Leave an upvote if you liked this video, downvote if you disliked it, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought about this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye-bye.